Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Yaboom RGB cooling hat for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now on my channel, I've done a lot of case reviews, a lot of cooler reviews for the Raspberry Pi 4, but this one looked really interesting, so I jumped right on it. At a price point of $18, I think this could totally be worth it, if it works correctly. So this is known as the RGB cooling hat. I actually picked mine up from Elephant J for $18 shipped. But what's really awesome about this cooling hat is it has an OLED display that comes with it and it will show you your RAM usage, CPU usage, temp, and your IP address right on top of the Pi. It also has a built-in 40 millimeter fan with temperature control, so you can actually program this to come on at certain temperatures. In this video, I'm gonna be using the stock scripts that you get from their website. And inside of the box, you obviously get the instruction manual. It's in Chinese on one side and English on the other. We also get this small OLED display, and this is gonna give us all the information we need to know about our Raspberry Pi when it's running. And finally, the hat itself with the 40 millimeter fan, which they claim is super quiet. And I'm gonna have this set up to only come on when the temperature hits 55 degrees Celsius of the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU. There's three programmable RGB LEDs on the bottom and we still have full access to our GPIO with this hat on. So in this video, I'm just gonna do a quick assembly and then we're gonna install their scripts. I've already looked over it and it does look a bit confusing. So I'm gonna see if I can come up with an easier way to get this up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4. Looking over the instructions, everything looks really simple. I mean, it's straightforward to put this hat on. I'm gonna be using a Raspberry Pi 4, four gigabyte model, and I'm gonna be running the new 64-bit version of Raspbian OS. First thing I need to do is go ahead and get these standoffs installed on the Raspberry Pi 4. So I've got the standoffs installed on the Raspberry Pi 4, and unfortunately this kit does not come with an aluminum heatsink for your Raspberry Pi 4 CPU. I guess they expect just to cool it by blowing on the CPU, and yes, that would definitely work, but there's room underneath this hat to add something, and I'm going to do that for this video. Now this is a bigger heatsink. I believe it's 25 millimeters by 11 millimeters tall, and I use these on all of my Raspberry Pi 4s if I'm not using some type of passively cooled case. But this should fit right underneath this hat, and the fan's going to blow right on it, so it'll keep this nice and cool. And since this has temperature control built in, this fan doesn't need to run all the time. When it's under heavy load and it hits 55 degrees Celsius, it will come on until it gets cool enough. But if you're just running heavy loads on the Raspberry Pi all day, this fan would probably stay on. I'm going to secure this to the Raspberry Pi by adding the four included screws here, and then we'll throw the OLED display in. So we got this mounted up, we'll put the display in, and we'll have to install their scripts to get everything working on this board. Now they do have it set up to where you could just install a single script for the RGB, or the fan, or the temp control, or even the OLED, but I want everything on this board working, from the temperature controlled fan, the OLED to display all my information, and the RGB itself, so I'm going to be setting it up that way. But with this hat installed, everything's still accessible, even the CSI connector on the board itself. It has the raised GPIO pins built in. We can get to the USB and the HDMI, so it doesn't block off anything from your Raspberry Pi 4. And real quick, without any scripts installed, we get some green lights, and the fan is not working right now. I haven't got to temperature, but I'm pretty sure we still need to get that script installed to get everything working correctly. All right, so now we need to get everything working on the board from the little OLED display, the RGB, fan control, and temperature control. Now on their website, they have full instructions. It gets a bit hectic when you go down here because they're trying to tell you how to run each and every one of these separately. But personally, I want the whole board to function when my Raspberry Pi starts up. So I'm gonna make this as easy as possible for everybody here. I'm going to leave a link in the description. You can download this. It's the RGB Pi Hat dot tar. We will need this in just a second, but there's a few things we can follow on their website itself. From the very top, we're going to go to install related software. This is going to give you everything you need. I'm going to go ahead and open up terminal. The first thing I want to do is enable I2C, sudo, raspi, config. From here, we're going to go to Interfacing Options, I2C. Yes, we want to enable it. OK, Finish. Now I can just type in Clear. It's going to clear out my terminal. We're going to CD into our home directory. 
We're going to get their version of wiring pi. This is going to clone it into our home directory. We're going to CD into that wiring pi folder that we just downloaded into our home directory. And we need to build it. sudo dot forward slash build. Let's go ahead and install GCC. It should already be installed, but just make sure it's up to date. sudo apt git install GCC. And you'll probably get something that looks like this. Now we're done with terminal. We're going to close this down. And we're going to grab that RGB pi hat dot tar. I'm going to extract it here. And inside of this folder, you'll find a temp control folder with a lot of different scripts in it. And we'll also find our auto start script. We're going to open up our home pi directory, config, auto start. And we want to put this start dot desktop right in here. We're going to back up to our home pi directory and place the temp control folder right in here. We're going to close all this down. And now when we restart our Raspberry Pi, all of the functions on the board will work. We'll have that display going, the fan, temperature control, and the RGB lights. So I'm going to go ahead and restart my Pi, but I'm going to move over to my table just to give you guys a look at this thing. All right, so here we are. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. As you can see, nothing's happening yet. That's because the operating system needs to boot before we get any activity on the hat itself. Okay, so I wanted to get this heated up. I've opened up a few 4K video files just to uh, get that CPU working. Unfortunately, there is an issue here with the 64-bit version of Raspbian OS. If we take a look at that CPU usage, it's going up to around 200%, and I actually saw it go up to 500%. So initially, I was thinking it might have been per core, but unfortunately, this only has four cores. It does work perfectly fine with the 32-bit version, and I have contacted the company. Hopefully, they can come up with a fix for this. But everything else looks like it's working perfectly fine. The CPU temperature, we have the RAM usage, disk space usage, and our IP address. And when this hits 55 degrees Celsius, the fan will kick on. And this fan is super quiet. The way I have it set up right now, it kicks on at 55, shuts off at 48. So if you're above that 55 degrees Celsius marker, it will stay on and it will ramp up from there. So if you were to hit 60, which I don't think we can with this heatsink on here, the fan will spin faster. And I do have five YouTube tabs open up. A few of them are running at 1080p, a few of them are running at 4K. I just wanted to get this thing hot. That's why we're using so much RAM here. They do have a little demo of the fan ramping up at different temperature markers. And you can also program the RGB on here. I'm just sitting with the stock script, but you can set it to pretty much whatever you'd like. So yeah, it definitely works, and it works well in keeping the Raspberry Pi cool. I personally really love this OLED. Hopefully they can get that CPU usage fixed in the 64-bit version of Raspbian OS. But overall, it's a decent little setup, and I personally like it. Now, is this totally necessary? Absolutely not. You don't need a hat like this to get your Raspberry Pi cooled down. But I love the fact that we can get that information right on that little screen. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I saw this online, and I was really interested in it. So I went ahead, picked it up, and did a quick video on it. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.